Hello everyone and welcome to this year's European Hematologic Association meeting being held in Milan from June 12th to June 15th at the Allianz Milan Convention Center. Before we go any further, I would love to draw your attention to the modern piece of art that this convention center is. The roof has the construction in the shape of Italy, so there is great symbolism behind this venue. IHA this year has assembled over 10,000 participants and we are undoubtedly already seeing practice changing data being presented. Today I'm going to be joined by two leading experts in the field, Dr. Amir Fati, Director for the Center for Leukemia, Massachusetts General Hospital, and Dr. Gunter Koene, who is the Deputy Director and Chief of Oncologic Hematology at Miami Cancer Institute. Stay tuned for what they have to say about their takeaways and impressions for IHA. Hello everyone, it is a pleasure to welcome you from the European Hematological Association annual meeting, this year being held in Milan. I have an honor today to be joined by Dr. Amir Fati, who is the program director for the Center for Leukemia, Massachusetts General Hospital. Dr. Fati, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you for having me. What brings you to Milan? The European Hematology Association uh, for a presentation of some of our data and also mm -hmm. to learn more from our colleagues from uh, across the globe. And this conference has been going on now for a couple of days. What are you most excited about that you have heard to date from IHA? I think there have been some very interesting presentations over the course of the last two days. Uh, you know, the menin inhibitors uh, are emerging. There are uh -huh. several presentations on menin inhibitors. Enzomenib, Plexomenib, uh, Ziftomenib, uh, you name it, they're all here. Uh, they're being studied in the relapse refractory setting as right. monotherapy, but also in combination okay. with intensive and non-intensive therapy in the upfront setting. So mm -hmm. I think they're emerging as the most recent uh, promising targeted uh, therapies for subsets of AML, mm -hmm. namely MPM1 mutated and mm -hmm. KMT2A rearranged AML. What would the proportion of patients that these, this new class of drugs can cater to be? Well, in the upfront setting, MPM1 mutated AML is a large group, about uh -huh. 30 to 40 percent of okay. patients, if depending on the study that you look at. KMT2A rearranged is smaller. Mm -hmm. It tends to occur more commonly in younger patients and pediatric patients right. uh, with AML. But I think overall across the adult population of patients 18 and up is somewhere around 5 percent, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think it's very applicable. Right. Um, in the relapse refractory setting, it's probably less because NPM1 mutated AML is less of a proportion. But nevertheless, uh -huh. still a sizable minority of patients have these targetable uh, alterations. Right. Anything else other than menin inhibitors? Well, uh, yes, uh, you know, I think there is some uh, emerging data with oral uh, hypomethylating agents okay. uh, being combined with venetoclax. As you know, in older patients, azacitidine and decitabine and venetoclax mm -hmm. are now the standard of care. Mm -hmm. uh, but these have been mainly used as injectable forms of uh, uh, hypomethylating therapy. Recently, be, uh, there have been novel ways of administering HMAs as oral agents. So mm -hmm. the combination of oral HMA and venetoclax is emerging and some of that data was presented at the meeting as well. That's also exciting because it provides convenience to patients uh, right. who potentially can benefit from this combination of HMA and venetoclax. So I think that's exciting as well. There's also data overall emerging in AML at the meeting, but also overall with triplets. So okay. you combine HMA, Ven, plus uh, a novel therapy um, to see if you can enhance the efficacy of this uh, uh, mm -hmm. gentle regimen, uh, but hopefully not worsen the tolerability. Exactly. So the two modalities you've mentioned, the menin inhibitors and the oral HMAs in combination with venetoclax, do you see those as practice changing already or soon to come? I think soon is probably the, the, the more correct answer. Already a menin inhibitor is approved uh, recently, Revumenib for particularly the KMT2A rearranged AML. Mm -hmm. Ziftomenib has a PADUFA date, so that too may be approved right. soon uh, for NPM1 mutated AML. I think it's coming. I think it's soon. Mm -hmm. The oral HMA, we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is the future. Oral therapies, outpatient therapies, mm -hmm. I do believe that overall the field is moving in that direction. That direction. Not quite there yet. Right. And I would love to dovetail um, off of what you've mentioned, and that is triplets. 
So combining um, the standard of care backbone, specifically perhaps even for those patients who are ineligible for high dose chemo regimens or just chemo altogether, yeah. and combining then and HMAs with a novel treatment. Um, what is exciting in that arena that you are perhaps even trialing in the clinic that you're able to speak about and that's being presented here at IHA? Well, I think a lot of companies, uh, uh, the approach for developing drugs uh, is consistent. You look at the drug as a single agent in the relapse refractory setting, and if you find promise in terms of both tolerability and activity, you bring it into the front line and combine it with standard of care therapy, such as intensive chemotherapy or hypomethylating agents with venetoclax or hypomethylating agents alone in the case mm -hmm. of MDS. I think the menin inhibitors are one example, FLIT3 inhibitors are another, IDH inhibitors are okay. another, and then there is a series of uh, immune-based assets, uh -huh. uh, such as uh, uh, the LIT uh, agent from PureTech. It's, uh, I think, it's a very promising anti-galactin-9 inhibitor mm -hmm. in combination with standard of care therapies that there's a clinical trial we're involved with. We look forward to sort of learning more about that agent, but certainly the pathway is of interest. There was some recent data that was published on TIM3 inhibitors, mm -hmm. similar pathway of immune checkpoints. There is a variety of antibody drug conjugates and mm -hmm. naked antibodies, as well as um, bispecific and tri-specific agents being studied that over time, if they show promise, probably are gonna be attempted to be studied in combination with standard of care therapies as well. So I think the field is certainly exciting and full of interesting assets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and hopefully in the coming years we'll learn more about whether they can be safely and effectively combined with standard therapies and hopefully improve the care and outcomes of, of our patients. Absolutely. Hello everyone, welcome to IHA, European Hematologic Association meeting this year being held in Milan June 12th to the 15th. I'm honored to be joined today by Dr. Gunther Koene, who is the Deputy Director and the Chief of Hematologic Oncology and Bone Marrow Transplant of the Miami Cancer Institute. Dr. Koene, wonderful to see you Europe side. Wonderful to see you here, Dr. Filipovic. What brings you to IHA? Well, there are multiple reasons to attend IHA. Um, number one, there are so many new developments and rapid developments in the treatment approaches for hematologic malignancies including leukemia, multiple myeloma, myelodysplastic syndromes, myeloproliferative disorders. Yes. And uh, number two, there are noticeable differences in treatment approaches between the European approach and the United States approach. And it's important to recognize those and understand the rationale of these different approaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, number three is just to stay up to date with all the rapid developments um, that are occurring right now in the hematologic malignancies and finally i have uh, i'm honored to be a presenter of a novel approach for uh, acute myeloid leukemia with uh, car t-cell approaches now that uh, is another reason to uh, to join this wonderful meeting this meeting has been going on for a couple of days now we have two more days to go there have already been some splashing presentations and i know that you are here from the morning till the late afternoon and evening and don't miss anything what are your takeaways to date that excite you well in general i have to say the uh, integration of immunotherapeutic approaches for the treatment of hematologic malignancies is the most exciting part mm -hmm. in our field right now so there is as everybody knows a strong movement to reduce exposure to chemotherapeutic approaches and instead integrate immunotherapeutic approaches by different mechanisms. Uh, and we know about um, integration of bispecific uh, treatment approaches, anti bispecific antibodies, that is, or CAR T cell approaches, or in your case, the integration of a monoclonal antibody right. against a peptide that is overexpressed on leukemic cell population. Right. So those are all exciting, exciting uh, new developments. But um, I. Um, focused this year a little bit on treatment approaches for high-risk acute myeloid leukemia mm -hmm. because there is still a significant and unmet need to improve this particular patient population. Right. So um, particularly 
TP53 and in fact biallelic TP53 mutated acute myeloid leukemia mm -hmm. or patients with monosomy 5, right. uh, monosomy 8 or combinations thereof do still very poorly and I think we need to focus our attention on novel approaches mm -hmm. to, uh, to these patients. Right. There was some data presented here on menin inhibitors. We know that that's the next class of targeted agents. We've had FLIP3 inhibitors, IDH inhibitors before that garnered a lot of excitement. Um, and we're grateful that we have these new targeted approaches coming to the space. Tell me whether you see a gap for AML patients uh, with non-targeted approaches and how would you go about filling that gap? And is there anything kind of coming out of these rooms that garners to that population? Well, non-targeting approaches that alludes to co additional combinations of okay. chemotherapeutic approaches, uh -huh. I understand. Uh -huh. so that's correct, the question. Uh -huh. And I, I think, no, there, there is a movement away from adding another chemotherapeutic to it. We, we had a very long and very interesting presentation yesterday about the history of 7 plus 3 induction chemotherapy right. uh, for acute myeloid leukemia. Yes, there, <clears throat> there are some tendencies to add another drug to 7 uh -huh. plus 3, but they are either menin inhibitors or uh, non-chemotherapeutic uh, agents, and uh -huh. with that they are uh, uh, targeted therapies to be included. Uh -huh. Very interesting approaches, I think, uh, and that brings us back to step number one, is to really make patients transplant eligible right. and that requires to get them into a hopefully complete remission mm -hmm. then they can be transplanted mm -hmm. and then the next question that will come up there is do we have approaches for post-transplantation maintenance treatments mm -hmm. which has been the standard of care for multiple myeloma and uh, lymphoma uh, lack thereof for patients with acute myeloid yeah. leukemia and that is largely uh, induced and explainable by the fact that the markers on leukemic cell populations are also expressed on hematopoietic stem cells. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very selective, therefore, mm -hmm. to have maintenance strategies that are targeting the leukemia cell population, but spare the recognition or the elimination of hematopoietic stem cells. Absolutely. And if I understand correctly, that would be the scenario that would be the ideal case uh, for the frontline patient population. I'm curious about your thoughts of what we currently have at our disposal in terms of the treatment armamentarium and what's coming down the pipeline, perhaps in the relapse refractory setting as well, where things perhaps are not looking up. Well, relapse refractory setting is another big problem in, okay. in the patient population with acute leukemia. So that's exactly the population that I also alluded to a little bit. If you do not get them into remission with 7 plus 3, the question is, what do you do next? Mm -hmm. And there are certainly now approaches with uh, venetoclax and uh, HMA combinations right. to get them into remission and with that to transplantation. Mm -hmm. But um, there is, again... Um, the integration of other menin inhibitors, as you mentioned before, to try to increase mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, number of patients that get into a transplantable remission. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And we're all here to do better for patients.